We're going to look at the difference between combinational circuits and sequential circuits. These two types of circuits are very similar but also fundamentally different. In fact, the sequential circuits are built using combinational circuits and an extra element that we're going to call a D element. But let us start looking at combinational circuits and we're going to realize a specific combinational circuit that we have seen before. So the, def the definition of a combinational circuit is that it is a circuit that only consists of Boolean functions and there are no loops. And this is the main difference between sequential circuits and combinational circuits because the sequential circuits, they have loops or feedback. The example that we're going to look at for a combinational circuit is an example that we have seen before. It is the majority function. So recall that the majority function in our case where we used three variables is defined as giving the output zero if the sum of the inputs are zero and one. And it gives the output one if the sum of the inputs is two or three. If you want to do a full realization of this majority function, we start by defining the truth table. So for the truth table, what we do is that for each possible input, we write the corresponding output. And for the majority function, we will have for all zeros, it will give the output zeros. For uh, if there is one, one as input, it will give a zero as output as well. So that, that we have in three places because now the zero is in majority and for the rest where we have two or more ones then the one will be in majority so we will have the output one. One way to see how this function can be realized is to divide it into different parts. So we can start with the first part that we're going to call A where we're going to look at only one of the ones in the truth table. So we're going to look at the first one that here that we find in the truth table. And then we're going to rewrite this as another function that only has a one in that particular position. So if we look at this function that we now have, what we can see is that if we want to write this function, we can write it as x1 prime x2 x3. Because this means that x1 must be a 0, x2 must be a 1, x3 must be a 1. So if we want to realize this with, an, with a circuit, then we have x1, we put this into an inverter, which will give us the complement. Then we have x2, and then we have x3. And if we look at how we have defined the AND function, the AND function only gives us an output 1 if all the inputs are 1. So here we could write this as this AND function here. In the next step, we look at our second one in our truth table, and we define a similar function only extracting that particular one that we have in the function and then we can do this in the same way so this function could be written as x1 x2 prime x3 because x1 must be a 0 x2 x1 must be a 1 x2 must be a 0 and x3 must be a 1 and we can write this in a similar way using our symbols where we have the complement that is an inverter first for x2 and then we take x1 x2 prime put it into the AND function and now we have realized this function that we have called B and then we continue by looking at the third one that we have in our truth table and we extract that which will give us the following truth table and this we can write at x1 x2 x3 prime and we have looked at this one now so this can be written as a circuit using the symbols that we have defined before but in this case we use the complement of x3 instead 
and here we have realized our part function that we call C. And then the last one in the truth table we extract in the same way by writing all of the other ones as zero. And if we look at this function, this can be written as x1, x2, x3, where we have extracted the last one. So if we write this in a similar way as before, we have now the inputs x1, x2, x3. None of them are complemented and the circuit is simply written like that. The final step is now to combine these different parts that we have broken down the function into. And we can see that if we look at the definition for the OR function, this says that it will give a 1 in the truth table if at least one of the inputs are a 1. So we can actually write this as A or B or C or D which will give us the truth table like this. So this truth table is the same as the one that we had for our function y from the beginning. So what we can do now is that we can summarize this by writing our function y of x1, x2, x3. This will be equal to x1 prime x2 x3 or x1 x2 prime x3 or x1 x2 x3 prime or finally x1 x2 x3. So this is our expression for the majority function. And now we can realize the full function using a circuit. So what we have here is that the first part that we have here is the one that we previously called A. The second part is the one that we previously called B. The third part is the one that we previously called C. And here the fourth part is the one that we called D. And all of these were combined using an OR gate. So this gives us the full circuit realization of the majority function. Something that we can note already now is that this is not the best way to realize this function. At least, at least it is not the minimal way to realize this function. It would be possible to realize this with fewer expressions and also fewer gates by writing the expression as x1, x2 or x1, x3, or x2, x3. This will be a more compact format to write this expression in, and we will call this a minimized function later. But exactly how to reach this minimized expression, we will return to later in the course.